rolling. God, I love this mic. It sounds so good. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the Microtech FL M930, a marvel of modern microphone engineering. <laughs> Except that it's not modern. It's an old mic. That's how it's so goddamn marvelous. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's start this thing. You're listening to Tone Benders, the sound designer's podcast. Let's do this. Welcome to Tone Benders. My name is Renee Coronado, and with me today, as always, it's Tim Muirhead. Hey, Tim. Hey, Renee. How you doing? I am doing well. I'm very excited. We're going to do something brand new today on the Tone Benders podcast. We're going to launch a crowdsource. Whoa, big time. You know, crowdsources are a thing now in the sound design and sound effects creation community. And this was one that I was going to do just on the Slack channel. But after some thought and consideration, I, I figured I wanted to do it a little more widely than that. Fundamentally, I need as many people to participate in this as possible. The more people that participate in this because the elements are going to be so unique, uh, the better the end library is going to be. Well, let's tell them what the library is. Let's tell them the concept. So the concept of this idea is conversation particles. And one of the hardest things to do with Walla and especially with with like recordings of groups of people is to get small groups of people or to get like really good controlled surround groups of people um, or anything else like that. And so the idea that I had was what if we ran a crowdsource where we got real natural human being conversations as individual uh, solo recordings and then in post we can take all of those individual mono conversations and create crowds with as much density as we need per specific crowd. And so that's kind of why I want to do this as a crowdsource, because ideally we'll get, you know, dozens or hundreds of individual recordings of people that are metadata tagged in such a way that we can appropriately balance them by, you know, gender and accent, dialect, et cetera, like that and create either diverse or not diverse crowds that can be just used as conversational filler in film, TV, and video games. Yeah, that'd be super useful. Like, that'd be good in your world, right? Well, the tricky thing in my world is is that uh, in order to use them on uh, international stems and such, we'd have to find a way to break the particles down enough so that they weren't actual understandable words. But, uh, or, you know, you can put them on the dialogue stem in that case too, but uh, they're definitely useful tools to have in the tool belt for sure. One of my most useful crowd ambience recordings was of a coffee shop down in South Dallas where there was literally like four people talking halfway across the room and nobody else was in the place. You wash it with enough verb and you put other like foreground dialogue and stuff in front of it. And it's just this perfect like other human presence that's not obtrusive, that's not incorrect. It just fits. It's just this glue that's just perfect. And like that's the holy grail of a lot of these ambient recordings is getting something that's not too dense. Because, you know, a lot of, you know, human gatherings are not thousands of people they're handfuls or dozens of people yeah i was working on a show that we mixed last week and part of it took place in a art gallery not like the big opening of the art gallery just like you know the afternoon in an art gallery with like you know 20 people in the room and a large room milling about 
that's a hard sound to come up with because, uh, you know, we all have huge crowds and we all have one or two people, but that yeah. mid ground is hard to come up with without having the budget to go bring in a full, uh, loop group. Yeah. Well, that's the other side of it too, is exterior crowds, right? Yeah. It's so hard to get clean, good sounding exterior crowds that aren't just utterly polluted with traffic and airplanes and birds and animals and whatever else. And so Loop Group actually does a really, really great job of covering that. And so what I would love to do would be to create a particle-based library that can, to some degree, fill the functions of Loop Group for projects for which Loop Group is not an option, right? Do you um, want to just describe your use of the word particles in this situation? Yeah. So it's not like grains, even though grains is like a common phrase for this type of thing. What I want to use is a full five to 10 minute conversation and another one and another one and another one without chopping them into little pieces. And I want to let the natural gaps and pauses that happen in a conversation exist as we create collages and montages of these recordings. And then you, you create your collage, you create your montage, you know, you pan it out, you put it in space, and then it just turns into a thing. So each individual conversation would be its own particle. Now, I've done some tests of this already, and I've used sound particles to do it. And the reason I, I use sound particles is because I can kind of place them in space and I can put a microphone array up and I can algorithmically move them around a little bit so they're not so static. And it just causes a little bit of extra glue to happen as it's rendering out the uh, the mix. And then you take the rendered mix and you pump it through different reverbs and it turns into a very, very believable thing. And I'll, I'll put some examples at the end of this episode as far as what the end result turns out to be, but it, it really works. And your examples were with like five people or so? What, yeah, how, four. Four? So we'll have to extrapolate in our imaginations what that could be with, with you know, maybe 70 voices or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's probably an upper bound too, right? I mean, maybe. I don't know. That's the beautiful thing about software like Sound Particles and other software like that is you can put thousands of particles up and generate something and, and it would be cool, right? And that's just another incentive to get as many individual recordings to this as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So there's the other fact of like, we need real human conversations. And these conversations need to be like 100% cleared and cool to use, even if people can discern and hear the individual conversations. Right? Yeah. So the way that I'm approaching that is for the conversations themselves, what I want to do is record phone conversations. One side of the phone conversation, we should be clear. Yes, one side of a phone conversation. So the way that I the way that I set up my tests was I set my microphone like literally I was sitting in this room for my test and I set my microphone about arm's length away, so about here. So it was it was literally about arm's length away. So this my mic's about arm's length away right there. And I would put my earbuds in and I called my mom. And I had a, you know, a 10-minute conversation with my mom about whatever. And all I recorded was my half of the conversation. And because I'm only recording my voice, I have full usage rights and clearance rights to submit my voice to this project. And so I recorded my voice. I did not record my mom's voice, <laughs> right? And I used my conversation as one of the particles in the test. And the couple of considerations I wanted to keep in mind was I didn't want proximity effect. So I didn't want it to sound like this because if I get right up on the mic, it's just not going to sound natural in regular context. Right. But I also had to be careful not to come too far off mic to where I'm getting a bunch of reverb in the space. So I didn't come out like this either. Right. Cause this kind of conversation would never play outside if I'm, if, if, if there's too much room verb. Right. Um, so I wrote a whole spec and the spec is, Basically, get a mic, put it about arm's length away in the quietest, deadest room you can find. Put your earbuds in, call somebody that you enjoy speaking to, have a conversation, record your half of it. Leave all of the gaps and spaces in there. While they're talking to you, that gap is going to exist and that gap is going to be fine. Yeah, that's important to leave that in. Yeah, because it's going to control the density as you start layering these things together. And an interesting thing happens too, because sometimes those gaps kind of serendipitously like line up and people sound like they're responding to the, to each other off of different conversations, which is super cool. 
The other thing is from a preamp perspective, it's way better to cut soft than even medium in this type of situation because inevitably you're going to laugh. <laughs> and laughter is just super spiky, right? And so what my plan is, is as I get all of these particles in, I'm going to do a batch process where I batch normalize everything to negative 30 to give tons and tons of headroom for the dynamics that naturally occur in a conversation, but still kind of keep an LUFS that's broad across everything. So they all will lay against each other and have a good relationship with regards to one conversation to the next. So I'm going to get them in and I'm going to batch process everything. So I'm going to batch process to negative 30, high pass it at a certain thing and like kind of do nothing else. And what I would hope to hand back at the end of this crowdsource and everybody that participates in the crowdsource would obviously get an entire delivery back would be all of the individual grains so that you can create your own atmospheres as you see fit. And then also a bunch of pre-rendered grains, both in 5.1 and in stereo, maybe even in 7.1. I'll think about it, but definitely in a surround format and in stereo of varying densities and positions and just different re-renders that are just kind of pre-cooked that you can just grab and drop into place and leave them dry. So you can grab them and drop them into place, put a verb on them that's appropriate to your situation and you're good to go. You're, you're off and running. So that's the vision. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I think it'll be really fun. And uh, it, it's, it's something that I think everyone can find a way to participate in. You don't need a, uh, you know, a super expensive mic to participate in this one. You just need a quiet room that's pretty dead and to have someone to talk to on the phone. So like, th this is something I think everybody out there can participate in, and then they'll be getting a big library back in return. I think it'll be a really fun thing to take part in. Yeah, and that's the thing. I would prefer people to have a cardioid condenser microphone, but if you don't, then so be it. It's just about trying to get a direct sound with not a lot of proximity effect on it, with whatever equipment you have. And the other thing is, you know, I'm naturally like, I'm in my chair, I'm moving around, I'm doing this kind of stuff, I'm picking stuff up and whatever. And um, that kind of stuff is also okay in this context. It's okay to have a little bit of like humans doing things in the space, as long as it's not annoying. Like it doesn't have to be like hyper clinically cleaned up, I think. One thing that you do have to be careful of though, is if there are any copyrighted sounds that intrude on your recordings you do have to mark those and lose those so like if you're talking to somebody and then your phone goes ding ding and you get like a specifically like you know you get notifications that are copyrighted like you gotta clean those things out but like other just kind of natural organic things in the space i think are totally fine for sure so how do people participate in this renee so all of the instructions are on the website. They're at ToneBendersPodcast.com. You're going to see the show page for this particular podcast, and it's got a whole set of instructions all the way spelled out nice and clean for you. That's going to reiterate a bunch of this stuff. And then once, you know, and most of it's all about setup, just kind of get your setup set and tested in such a way that you're not going to burn 30 minutes of a conversation with somebody and go back and listen to it and be like, ah, oh, damn, I just totally messed that up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, just spend a little time on the setup and then you're kind of there. And then we've created a special email account for submissions to this. It's crowdsource at tonebenderspodcast.com. So you get the thing together. You don't even have to do UCS naming or anything else like that because I'm going to be doing posts to everything. There is some naming stuff that I am going to ask for with regards to your name, whatever language you're speaking, the country you're in, the region that you're in, just so that we can kind of help map people around from where they're at. Also, I think it's important to note that if you want to have a conversation not in English, in my opinion, 100% okay. Because, you know, a lot of conversations can benefit from other languages. And specifically in cases like yours, Tim, where you're looking for unintelligibility with regards to languages, right? But also, you know, say you're, you're trying to create, you know, a hotel room in New York or whatever. It's okay to have a lot of other languages sprinkled in there mm -hmm. that just give a more cosmopolitan kind of vibe as needed. So if you're someone that speaks multiple languages, should we encourage them to maybe submit more than one file? Yes. Well, and on that sense, I would encourage people to submit more than one file anyway, specifically because our audience and the sound community as a whole skews very heavily male. And one of the goals of this, I think, would be to get a much better balance of male to female than would probably naturally occur of just the individual listeners on this. So to that end, we've got a participation agreement on the site. 
that kind of spells out that by participating in this crowdsource, you are releasing your recording of yourself for use by anybody that pulls this down. And I'm going to have another waiver available for anybody else that you would like to record and submit. So if you're a man and you want to record a woman, you can go to the website, pull the waiver, get her to sign it, and then get two separate recordings, submit more than one. And anyone that has submitted with a waiver will get access back. Yeah, it's sad but true, unfortunately, that we scale so male. Any female listeners out there, we're counting on you to step (laughs) up here. Well, honestly, I think with the females, it's easy, right? With the men, they have to step up more because men have to go find women and get them to sign a waiver and record. But the more that that happens, the better this library is going to be. For sure. So as far as when we're going to wrap this up, I'm going to let this run for a long time. And the reason I'm going to let this run for a long time is because, again, I want to give as much opportunity as possible to get as wide a participation as possible. And again, specifically, as many non-male participants as possible. Uh, That's just going to dramatically increase the quality and the usability of this particular library. So we're going to go to the end of February. February 28th is going to be the cutoff date. And... Once you record, again, just send a link to crowdsource at tonebenderspodcast.com. We'll pull everything down. We'll keep a roster. And hopefully soon thereafter, after everything gets submitted at the end of February, we will, uh, we'll be able to wrap everything up and send it right on back to everyone that's participated. And I'm super excited about this. I've run some tests. I'm going to play a test for you right now just to get you excited about it. And I don't know. It's our first crowdsource. High fives, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then not sure. um, it might be it might be longer oh well so we um, i just wanted so to that, kind of get yeah, you up to date on everything so we did a uh, higher law firm out with a mound of huh yeah. um so hopefully they will so we yeah, no, so no, we no, put them on retainer yeah. you know you just kind no, of yeah, i know but they want to do it i think three days this week a credit card authorization and all that so it's it's about a four thousand dollar retainer no sorry five thousand dollar retainer they bill it at three sixty five an hour it's working out quite well yeah and um, yeah. so basically, oh, well, that, did I tell you kind of like the different paths that are available yeah. to us now? She's yeah, quiet. so we went she shopping. She came up for lunch or we went out for lunch. But, um, but I mean, it, it was shopping bad. It was in, in the afternoon, bit. yeah. We that was really nice. Really and then we had a friend, another friend to stay in the evening. Um, um, I didn't really go back to and so went out for a meal and a few drinks. Yeah. So basically, our options are. And then tonight, we're going to get her sister to sign an authorization, basically awarding us conservatorship. Piano, piano duo. It's actually one of my old lectures. And if she does that, they've got some new, they've got some new style pianos. The least complicated, most straightforward path to the music. Um, um, Barring that, the, the next step up would be to um, so hire a PI um, at our expense and um, serve is produced by Timothy Muirhead, Renee Coronado, and Teresa Morrow. Theme music is by Mark Strait. Send your emails to info at tonebenderspodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter via at the Tonebenders and join Tonebenders Podcast on Facebook. Support this podcast. You can use our links when you shop with Amazon or B&H or leave us a tip. Just go to tonebenderspodcast.com and click the support button. Thanks for listening. 